Hey everyone, Adam here with the Darkest Dungeon 2 Grave Robber Guide. In this video, I'll go over all the abilities for the Grave Robber, as well as what adding a mastery point to each skill does for you. My hope is that this video series will help you decide who you'd like to unlock skills on first during your playthroughs. The Grave Robber's first skill is Pick to the Face. Pick to the Face is a melee skill that can be used from any of the first three positions, but can only hit one of the front two enemies. The skill actually does really decent damage, has a respectable base crit, and bypasses block tokens. Perfect for enemies that are almost dead, but have that last token to go through. Using a mastery point on pick to the face will increase the top end damage to 10 from 7, bump up the crit slightly, and make it so that if an enemy has a combo token, it will consume it in order to add an additional 50% crit to the attack. The Grave Robber's second ability is Throne Dagger. Throne Dagger can be used from any of the back three positions, and hits an enemy in any of the back three positions on their side. This skill has moderate damage, great crit chance, and bypasses guard. Perfect for finishing off enemies like the pesky urchins that the woodsman is guarding. As a bonus, if the Grave Robber is stealth, the skill will also ignore dodge tokens. Using a mastery point on this skill will increase the top end damage slightly, as well as double the crit chance. In addition, if the enemy has a combo token, Throne Dagger will have its base crit chance increased to 80%. I recently had a run in which with Trinkets, I routinely had a 92% chance for Throne Dagger to crit. The third skill of the Grave Robber is Flashing Daggers. Flashing Daggers is an AoE skill that can be used from any of the back three positions and hits both middle positions of the enemy ranks. The skill does very little damage per target and has very low crit chance, though spending a mastery point here will increase both of them slightly. While seemingly a weak skill on the surface, Flashing Daggers has three main roles. First, it can be used to remove tokens on two enemies at once, for instance, it can be used against the four cultist fights to get rid of a dodge token on an evangelist and a cherub at the same time. Second, you can use this on a low health enemy to finish them off while still putting some extra damage into another enemy. And lastly, as always, AoE skills are great for on-hit effect trinkets as you get to roll twice. The fourth skill for the Grave Robber is Poison Dart. Poison Dart can be used from any position other than the front and can hit any enemy position. Poison Dart deals relatively low damage, but also leaves an enemy with a Blight damage over time effect. Using a Mastery Point here will increase the top end damage slightly, double the crit chance to 10%, and double the Blight damage to 4 per tick. In addition, the move will now consume an enemy's combo token for a 50% additional chance to crit. This is important because a move that applies a dot will have its max duration increased to 5 rounds from the standard 3, giving you 8 more total damage from the Blight. Next, we have the recently nerfed fifth skill of the Grave Robber, Absinthe. Absinthe is a self-heal that, if under 25%, will heal the Grave Robber for 33% of her maximum HP. The skill will also leave her with three dodge tokens, making it so that the next three attacks against her have a 50% chance to miss. Also leaves her with a speed token, which will increase her position in the turn order for the next round. Using a mastery point will upgrade the dodge tokens into dodge plus tokens, which have a 75% chance to dodge rather than the base 50%. Regardless of the upgrade, this move can now only be used three times a battle. For the nerf, you could use it as much as you wanted. Now we are on to the skills that start out locked. You'll need to visit and complete Shrines of Reflection to gain access to these skills. If you'd like to see all the Grave Robber's Shrines of Reflections, be sure to check out those videos from me in the comments and description. The Grave Robber's sixth skill is Dead of Night. Dead of Night can be used from any position in order to destroy a single enemy corpse. Doing so will heal the Grave Robber for 33% of her health and leave her stealth, which synergizes well with several of her other upcoming moves. Upgrading this skill with a Mastery Point will increase the heal to a whopping 50%, as well as remove a point of stress from the Grave Robber. The skill does have a battle use limit of 3, which may seem like it doesn't matter, but there are fights in the game in which mobs can spawn additional corpses, namely the Dinner Cart fight. And here's where I take a quick second to say thank you to the more than 16,000 of you that have subscribed to the channel so far. I really do appreciate it and wouldn't be able to keep making this kind of content without you. Uh, but back to the guide. The next unlockable ability for the Grave Robber is Glint in the Dark. This skill can be used from any of the first three positions and hits any of the first three of the enemy. Glint deals moderate damage, it has low crit, but it ignores stealth as well as 20% of the enemy's death blow resistance. Using a Mastery Point here will increase the damage and crit as expected, as well as cause Glint to completely ignore the enemy's death low resistance if she is stealthed. Due to this skill's ability to remove stealth, I strongly suggest switching it in if traveling through the sluice where stealth swine are common. 
The Death Blow Ignore can also be nice for turn limited road fights, bosses, and high loathing, but it's sometimes hard to decide what move to give up in order to fit this in. On to the eighth skill, Lunge. I absolutely loved Lunge in the first game and would occasionally make entire parties around ensuring the Grave Robber could use Lunge every single round, sometimes more than one Grave Robber. This is definitely still possible, aside from the extra Grave Robber thing, as many classes do have skills that move them forward, allowing the Grave Robber to be pushed to the back for follow-up lunges. Lunge has high damage and high crit, and will send the Grave Robber forward two positions on use. The skill can only be used from the back two positions, and can hit any of the front three enemy positions. It also ignores dodge tokens of the Grave Robber is stealthed, making in buffs or trinkets that have chances to apply stealth excellent choices for the Grave Robber. Using a mastery point on Lunge increases the top end damage as well as bumps the crit chance to 30%. In addition, Lunge can now bypass block tokens in the same manner it bypasses dodge tokens. The Grave Robber's ninth skill is Pirouette. This skill can be used from any of the front two positions and hits both frontline enemies with a pretty decent damaging AoE attack. Using this skill will also send the Grave Robber to the back position on your team while leaving her with a dodge token and a daze token. The Daze token is unfortunate as it's going to cause her to go last during the next round if not removed. Upgrading this skill increases the damage and crit chance as well as changes the dodge token to a dodge plus token, which as mentioned earlier, makes it so the next attack directed at your Grave Robber has a 75% chance to miss. The skill does have a two round cooldown however. The 10th Grave Robber ability is Repartee. This skill can be used from any position but does require the Grave Robber to be stealthed. Using the skill will remove stealth, but adds three dodge tokens and two taunt tokens to the Grave Robber. Upgrading the skill with a mastery point will change the dodge tokens to dodge plus tokens, making for some pretty reliable dodge tanking. The final skill for the Grave Robber is Shadow Fade. Shadow Fade can be used from any of the front two positions, sending the Grave Robber back two spots and giving her stealth. Upgrading this skill also gives a speed token, which will ensure she goes early in the next round's turn order, so that you can put that stealth synergy to work right away. And that does it, every single ability for the Grave Robber. As this is early access, of course, many of these could change over time, but given what we've seen so far, the essence of the moves should remain, with just specific numbers being tweaked as we move forward. I hope you enjoyed this Darkest Dungeon 2 Grave Robber skill guide. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and leaving a comment, as it really does help the channel out a ton. And as always, thank you for watching.